My guest today is Jean Lang. Jean, how are you? Hi, David. I'm doing great. Oh, go ahead and wave. I didn't mean to interrupt for a wave. Hi. What do you do, Jean? Oh, well, I do all sorts of things. Yeah. For my job, for a job, though, for a living. I teach at a boot camp, a software development boot camp in Pittsburgh. It's called Academy Pittsburgh, uh -huh. and uh, it was started about three years ago. It's a pretty small uh, boot camp. Uh, my husband and I are the teachers at it. My husband mm -hmm. is the one who founded it. Oh, awesome. That sounds like fun. Yeah. yeah. I've been helping out with it since the beginning, and this spring I got to quit my full-time job as a software dev uh -huh. um, at a giant corporation uh -huh. and go to work at a company that employs two people right now, and it is wonderful. Uh, yeah. I love it so you much. You love teaching. Absolutely. I and do. you were teaching here at CodeMesh yeah. this week. Yeah, yeah, I was. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um. So this is my first time speaking at CodeMesh. Congratulations. I've uh, attended CodeMesh for several years, uh, but this not is as many as me, I'll bet. <laughs> You're probably right. Thirteen. Uh, yeah, I'm up to I think seven or so. That's impressive, though. Yeah. Um, it allowed me to get both the um, the crusty veteran for a long time <laughs> attendee and the noob for noob speaker. As you can see, I've had uh, fun with the ribbon collecting and you game. Got, oh, you got a Hanabi. Did you make that one? Or? I did. There were some that you could make. And I want to uh, tell the audience that uh, Gene taught me how to play Hanabi last year, and now it's my favorite game. That's wonderful to hear. I hope uh, <laughs> Only half that sentence is true. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope you get a chance to make it your favorite game someday. Okay. <laughs> it's one of my favorite games. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. I interrupted you. You were so. What are you? To, you had a we call them a pre-compiler here. Yeah. You had a workshop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first two days of Code Mesh, as you know perfectly well, but who knows if they do, yeah. um, are consist of four day, four hour workshops, two per day. So there's a mm -hmm. morning workshop and an afternoon workshop, yep. and there are chances to really learn by doing instead of learn by just hearing someone talk to you. And uh, so there are all sorts of pre-compilers, right? Mm. I've attended a, a wide variety, some of them really spectacular, mm. um, including uh, a couple of years ago, I attended my first improv pre-compiler here at oh, Code cool. Mesh. And it was put on by Jesse Sternschus uh, of Jessie. The Improv Effect. She's very cool. Mm. And it was all about uh, creativity. Um, and the, the way that the pre-compiler worked is that it was four hours of playing games and then talking about how the skills that you were developing in those games helped you to be more creative. Hmm. And I love this idea that you could use ah, games. You were inspired to yes, create your indeed, own Yes, indeed, yeah. <laughs> Cool. I love this idea that you could use games to practice a real life skill and get better yeah. at it and think about it. And that's been a theme in my life, um, not just improv games, which yeah. are just games that groups of people can play yeah. together, but also board games, yeah. uh, including Hanabi. Hanabi, and, my uh, favorite game. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been seeing that through video games with my son, who's eight years old. Yeah. Um, it, it's very interesting watching him learn to think about more things at a time or more consequences at a time through, through video games. So I truly all the way believe that games are an important way to learn and practice skills. I gave a talk about that at another conference earlier this year at okay. Abstractions. It was earlier this year, it's only January 12th <laughs> or something like that. Well, six months ago in, okay. in the summer. <laughs> earlier this uh, fiscal year, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, earlier this time period. Yeah. <laughs> um, that talk was about Hanabi. I do love Hanabi, it's true. Oh, me too. <laughs> So the skills that Hanabi teaches you are, are trust and communication, right. which are some of the most important ones to me. Mm -hmm. The skills we were working on this code mesh in the improv precompiler were skills that might be useful to someone who has to work with a group at some point. Uh, uh, which is almost everybody. <laughs> right. That's, that's my contention also. Yeah. Um, so we played games that, that worked on skills, like um, Celebrating Failure. That's the first one we do. That's the name of the game is Celebrating Failure? Um, it may have a better name. I don't know if it if it does. Okay. Um, but that's what we call well, it. Let's when start we with that. What it. is what is this game? Sure. Is, what we'll just call it celebrate failure. It, sure. What, what, how does it work? So um, this this game is one of a class of improv exercises, mm -hmm. improv games, which um, groups who do you know improvisational comedy yeah. might attract. I, li I live really close to Second City in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really have cool. three separate improv theaters in Pittsburgh. Sweet. I don't hang out with any of them <laughs> because I'm not. I don't really like to make up stories or be characters, mm. but I love the exercises that improv groups do together mm -hmm. to become more of a better group and able to do those things. Um, and those are the those are the things that I, we were practicing in this yeah. workshop. So there was no uh, you know no scene building. Uh -huh. There was no uh, sort of acting. Uh, we were just playing games together the whole sure. time. So, so all of these games are, are games that just groups of people can play together. It's a set of rules. You follow the rules together. Sometimes it's funny, but that's not the point, right? 
The point is practicing some sort of skill. Mm -hmm. So in celebrating failure, the way that it works is it, it's a mixer, um, which means that each individual person wanders around until they meet another person. And uh -huh. they do this repeatedly, so they okay. get to do it with multiple people. And when you meet a person, you celebrate with them some failure that you've had today or recently. So you might say, you know... Um, that, that I met Jean this morning and I couldn't remember her name. Hey! Oh, that's yeah. the game? You have to celebrate. Oh, so celebrate. You to, you know, oh, oh man, I totally <laughs> forgot her name. Yeah, I, saw, way to go. I, I played, uh, like, for hours we played this game <laughs> yesterday, and, which is the name of which I also forgot. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to pretend it was my favorite game. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I mean, yay! <laughs> See, I played Hanabi with someone, and I failed to convince them that it was their favorite game. Awesome! <laughs> And once you've celebrated failure together a little bit, you've slightly normalized that. You've done something a little bit silly. Yeah. You've um, seen something about that person, maybe not that much, yeah. but sort of something about It's kind about of an them. icebreaker, not only for Absolutely. the people, but also just to kind of get used to yeah. doing something out of the ordinary. Yes, and it's something that everyone can sort of identify and, and approach, and that <clears throat> we continue after the game, mm -hmm. after we do it for a couple of minutes. Right. We have to figure out how to quiet down a room <laughs> of 40 or 50 people who's been all yelling and high-fiving and yaying together. <laughs> Quieting um, down a bunch of... These are grown-ups, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, although we did have uh, two people who looked slightly younger than grown-ups. I didn't ask about their ages. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then we talk together about what celebrating failure means and, and why you would do that. And that's how the whole workshop went. We would play a game and then we'd talk about what we were working on there. Uh, a frequent question we ask is, you know, uh, what did you notice during that game? Or what made accomplishing the objectives of that game easier? Or what made it harder? Okay. Um, so we go on to practice other skills, not just celebrating failure, <laughs> but things like um, paying attention to what's happening. Uh, there are a whole bunch of games that fall into a class of energy passing games. Okay. We have a big group and the focus of attention has to move from person to person to person. Give me an example of this. Sure. Um, the, uh, uh, the very famous one is called Zip Zap Zop. <coughs> And this is a classic improv game. I, I don't know it. Don't yeah. So the way that it works is that uh, one person starts mm -hmm. and they say zip and mm -hmm. they direct that at another person. Okay. At first you just pass it around the circle <clears throat> so that it's very predictable yeah, it's like where tag. it's going. Yeah. So I would say zip. Zip. Here. And then I would, I'm now I'm, I'm it. Yes. And you would pass it to the next person. Right. But you don't say zip. You say zap. Okay. And then that person says zop to the next person. So at first and you're so just on. going around a circle and going zip, zap, zop, zip, zap, zop, zip, zap, zop, zip, zap, zop. Mm -hmm. Right? All right. Um, and then all of these games have this element where you can bump it up. So if people are doing well, if they're succeeding, mm. if they're not messing up at that point, well, yeah. then you bump it up a level. Okay. So the if, if they are messing up, they can go, I screwed up, it's the simplest game hey! ever! <laughs> and then everyone cheers for them. Uh, because we're all going to mess up at yeah. some point, not only in playing these games together uh -huh. and learning these skills, but also in our profession in life. You know, failing is an integral part of learning. So this is another uh, learning to accept failure game. Every game is Every a learning game. to accept oh, failure the game. The, uh. the reason we do celebrating failure first is to teach people that throughout the day we are going to celebrate failure okay. together. That it's that it's great. It uh. means that we're trying and learning and engaged, uh. not that we are terrible and awful and should be ashamed and should stop doing the thing uh i so actually let's go philosophically right all right i've been uh i'm sure you've worked in organizations where failure is not celebrated mm -hmm. that, that the way that you're rewarded is by being perfect yeah and of course we're not perfect nobody is perfect <laughs> yeah. but by, per, by m making uh people think that you're perfect that you never yeah. make mistakes yeah uh, which hiding, is a little bit toxic hiding your weaknesses yeah um, and uh it, which is a problem because that's how we we, we learn is by admitting we don't know like absolutely saying, you know, i don't know how to do this can you tell me how to do this <laughs> and if you were to say you don't know how to do that what kind of a dope doesn't know how to do that well that's toxic you know that's terrible, you, i know yeah. you wouldn't do that yeah. but in in not so many words some organizations do yeah. So. Have you seen uh, the the XKCD comic about being one of the lucky 10,000? Oh, yeah. The, 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 the has a, it's the first time you're learning about this thing. And they and so celebrate. <laughs> they celebrate the fact that you're going to learn it for the first time. And yeah, how exciting that so is. Yeah, it's so cool that I get to introduce you <laughs> yeah, to this Yeah, let's go get some Mentos today. and Coke, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, that's the, sort of the attitude. So 
yes, I told you, I'm a boot camp instructor as yeah. my day job, right? And it's really, really important for these adults who are coming in out of a job where they, they're used to knowing what they're doing uh -huh. and being an expert. And they haven't been in school for, for years and years and okay. years. And they're coming back into this environment of learning mm -hmm. where they're going to mess up. They're going to not know things. Oh, because there's career changes, right? They're, yeah. They're, they used to be, yep. I don't know, high school English teachers, and now yep. they want to oh, be you, a You've a named program. a person from our last class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to be an instructor, and I got a few teachers. That yeah. <laughs> um, and um, getting back into that attitude of learning, uh -huh. not only for the boot camp, but also for their job afterwards, uh -huh. whatever they go into, right. is so important and yeah. so hard for them. So the reason that I was ready to do this pre-compiler this year, um, and, and I did it with a co-speaker. I want to make sure that I tell who's, you who's that? that my excellent co-speaker is Remy Porter, okay. also from Pittsburgh. And he is um, a great city, by the way. Ah, I love it. <laughs> Just the right place. I'm Go sure on. there are other wonderful places also. There but are. Pittsburgh is mine. <laughs> um, Remy is far more uh, involved with the improv community than I am. Mm. He regularly practices with one of the theater there, theaters there. Mm. And we met a couple of years ago doing Pittsburgh tech things and mm. uh, started talking about improv. Cool. Pittsburgh and Tech Fest, I've been to that a couple times. <laughs> Have, you been that? Have you been there? Um, I've been to um, something named similarly and it might be that. All I'm right. not sure. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, and we started doing these improv workshops um, as part of the Academy of Pittsburgh boot camp course okay. in the uh, you know at the end of the first week of it to take these these people who are starting to learn and starting to see how hard it's going to be and how much they don't know and show them that it's it's good to fail because it means you're you're working forward together and you can have a great attitude about it to show them that you have to listen to and support each other mm -hmm. there's a really important concept that we work on called bringing a brick Okay. Um, which says when you're building something together, mm -hmm. um, one way to build something together is if someone just does it all themselves and everybody else isn't involved. Okay. But you can do more and more complex things if instead mm -hmm. of one person trying to do it, everybody brings a part of it um, and puts those parts together. Right. So you, you bring a brick, not the whole castle. Right. Um, and working on figuring out what, what's the right size of brick to bring? How do you combine those bricks together? Hmm. How do you accept the offers that other people are doing and build your own thing anyway? And can you really build something more complex by these little pieces that each person is bringing? And the answer that we found to that is absolutely yes. That oh, there yeah. are many things that the group knows that one individual, no one individual person in the group does know yet. Ah, that also can be applied to software development as well. Absolutely. That's, that's the whole theory behind microservices. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're all just microservices trying to build a <laughs> big ball of spaghetti. Yep. And learning how to coordinate is very <laughs> important. Yes, absolutely. Right. Uh, tell me about another one of the games that you did. Sure. Let's see. Um, let me tell you about a bringing the br a brick game. Oh, there's a game around this. Okay. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Oh, All these skills I'm mentioning are yeah. game are skills that we practice oh, yeah, through about these about games. Um, one of the very next games that we play after celebrating failure mm -hmm. is a, a name game because one of the great things about doing a workshop like uh -huh. this at a Banana conference. Banana Fana for FIFA. <laughs> that, one, that name game. A little bit different. Okay. Is that uh, you get to meet some people, and maybe you meet the person next to you uh -huh. in another session. Maybe. Maybe you're working with them and you get to. Okay. But when you're playing games with people, you get to interact with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And when you're reflecting together about it afterwards and the, the reflections and the insight are coming from the audience and not from, from the teacher, then you get to learn about how people think and who you might want to go hang out with some more and find out who they are. Oh, that's, that's one of the reasons I come to Code Mesh. Um, when you're silly together with people, you get <laughs> to like learn real things about them, okay. not just... What is your job? Right. What start, language do you but, like? Yeah, that's a good starting point, but uh, it's, it's, you don't get close with that. I love playing games with people to yeah, get yeah. to know them. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. I like to play Hanabi with people that I'm interviewing. Yeah, <laughs> we'll play again. <laughs> yeah, someday. Um, so this this name game that we play, um, in, in, we have a giant circle of people, right? Um, maybe we split up in smaller groups for this one, like 20 people. And uh, learning 20 people's names instantly and then remembering them is not a super easy task, right? Of course, yeah. And so during the name game, each person introduces themselves with their name, a, um, a adjective that starts with the same kind of sound, and emotion. Um, so I remember, you know, from this class, we had enthusiastic Eugene, <laughs> and Remy is always rolling Remy. <laughs> Um, and so the person introduces themselves, and then everyone else says, Hi, Rolling Remy. Wh who were you? 
like, oh, well, I'm jumping, Dean, but I can't do it too well in the seat. <laughs> Um, so we go around the circle, you know, once, maybe twice, uh-huh. so you get to practice everyone's. And then, just like Zip Zap Zap bumps up, the name game bumps up. Uh-huh. And instead of passing to the person next to you, you say yours, I, I'm i Jumping Jean, and you are Rolling Remy. And then, they're and then rolling Remy takes say, it. I'm Rolling Remy. And, and you, you are. <laughs> and you pass that energy and that remembering back and forth around uh-huh. the circle. After we've gone around once or twice, we say, you know, who here knows everybody's name? Oh, and challenge. Sometimes one person, two people raise yeah. their hand. But in general, after hearing everybody's name twice, you don't remember it, right? Yeah. We say, but I bet you know, who here knows at least one person's yeah. name? Um, and so that's the brick that they're bringing, uh, is that they're knowing one person. They're there. slightly smarter than they were right. 10 minutes ago. Yes. And then we show them that as a group, we know absolutely everybody's name. Uh, so that's our, our first sort of easy example of a a complex task (laughs) learning everybody's name really quickly Uh that the group can do easily Uh where one single person cannot right so uh let me ask this so this well everything you talked about is would be applicable i think to really uh, any industry like if they were going to go off and become uh school teachers or accountants or anything that had to interact with other people uh is there anything specific tech related Anything this specifically tech-related? This is a tech do. conference. The, the discussion is tech-related when we talk about it. Okay. For example, we play games that are about when you're working in a group, paying attention and actively listening and be re- being ready to jump in with mm-hmm. what you've got. And uh, we talk about you know what makes it easier to receive that energy across the circle. Uh-huh. What makes it harder? And uh, yesterday, or oh, Tuesday, someone came up with, uh, you know, it's easier if you do a TCP handshake first, where you make sure you've got the acknowledge before you do the send. <laughs> That's a nerdy <laughs> analogy right there. So you are <laughs> totally right that these skills apply to anybody who's working with a group of people. Um, the, the thing that's tech fo- focused about it is the people who come to it. Yeah, yeah they um, bring their experiences to it. And that, that shapes the, the discussion that happens there. And then also what they're going to do with those skills and lessons as they go back out into their normal everyday lives and jobs. Wow. Are you um, incorporating any of these games into the boot camp session? Yes, um, we do a, a two-hour session at the at the end of the first week of the boot camp. Oh, okay. And it's a huge, huge difference. Yeah. But people before they've played these games together, and people after they have. Oh, they just seem more comfortable with one another afterwards. Not only do they seem more comfortable, they also tell us that they are. We do we do feedback about all oh. our guests. Uh, instructors and workshops that we run Uh and um, this is consistently rated one of the highest it's one of the things that people remember and they say you know now i know everybody's name oh yeah now i mean that's a simple thing but it's meaningful when you're trying to work with people right yeah Um, uh, especially uh if you're changing careers what's what's more important than networking sure when you're trying to get a a new job in a new field and you know uh, one of the real benefits of, of academy to the the graduates of it is that network not only yeah. their own class who are sort of their first and best contacts forever but also other classes we have yeah. previous academy grads come in a, and talk to the current students about where their career path has taken them so far oh. and uh there's a common thing that happens where an academy grad gets hired one place and then they are are really successful there. Mm-hmm. And they say, "Hey, can we hire some more folks like you?" Oh, nice. And we form good. a team of, of people from Academy from uh-huh. different sessions that, wow. that all work together. Um, and they're a group of people who know how to support each other and how to say, "I don't know how to do that. Let's learn together." It's uh, okay if and we that's fail. That's a much much better environment to work in. Uh, absolutely. Supportive. Uh-huh. This is cool. So let me. So tell me about. Oh, so are you gonna give this session again? Um, uh, at other conferences? Uh, potentially. Uh-huh. Um, it's I'm only going January, to so it's hard to <laughs> plan yet. <laughs> I'm going to get to do it at Academy, and that fulfills my, yep. my need to play games with people. Right. Um, but uh, Remy and, jo- and I really enjoy working together uh-huh. because, you know, he's been practicing these skills of paying attention and being ready to support his partner for yeah. years and years in improv, and that makes him a joy to work with, right? Yes, um, and it's fun for him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that absolutely. My, that was my yes and uh, <laughs> improv thing. It's the only, yes. It's the only exercise I've ever done. <laughs>
Uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, and so because it's so much fun for us to do this together, it, it may make sense for us to do it at other conferences. Uh, so far, we've only done it at conferences that we were going to anyway. Right. Submit the talk, see if we can get to play yeah. some games with people there. Yeah. Uh, we were invited during this um, workshop to uh, submit to uh, another conference that's happening in the summer. So maybe. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, tell the folks about uh, how they can find out more about your academy. Yeah, absolutely. It's in Pittsburgh. I will speak to the camera. Yeah, <laughs> um, academy of Pittsburgh uh, can be found at academypgh.com. We may be able to do edu by now. Dot com will work for sure. Uh -huh. And you can feel free to uh, email me directly if you have any more questions at gene at academypgh.com. Do you have any other online presence yourself? Personal one? Not really. Okay. I don't spend That's a good. lot of time on t online. I'd That's rather talk smart. to people in, in real life and be able to play a game with them. <laughs> Jean, thank you so much. Thank you, David. It was a pleasure talking to you. Hi, friends in Pittsburgh and elsewhere. All the friends I've met in technology all around the world. I'm thinking of some of you right now. Hey. I want to invite you to invite me to play a game with you as soon as we have a chance to.